Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I'm super excited to talk about 2023 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. Why? Well, because I almost bought one for one thing, and I also own the 2022 Tundra TRD Pro for a while. And as you know, Tundra TRD Pro and Sequoia TRD Pro share a lot of components. So let me tell you five things I like and five things I'm not too crazy about on this new Sequoia. Welcome back. But first, let's check the quality of the Sequoia TRD Pro, which is dear to my heart, as you know, because I like to check uh, the overall manufacturing quality of all the cars I review, and particularly with Sequoia, because I had some issues with the Tundra TRD Pro, although it was still well made overall. Well, first, I'm going to look for the manufacturing quality of the uh, exterior panels to see if it's well made. Well, um, I think it's actually a little bit better than my Tundra TRD Pro in terms of panel alignment. But as you can see, it's not perfectly aligned yet. This is a little bit lower than this side. And the gap, it's about five millimeter on this side. And it goes to about 5.5 millimeter around here. And on the other side, it's actually about six millimeters. So unfortunately, I'm not too happy with the gap alignment uh, in terms of hood and the front fender. What about the rest of the body? This is okay. It's actually perfect aligned and it's actually um, about 4.5 millimeter here. But as you get to the back of this area between the front and the rear door and especially between the rear door and the back well this is a bit embarrassing toyota this is over six millimeter almost seven millimeter in terms of width i can almost put my small finger in there so while this is maybe reasonably acceptable in within the automotive industry for trucks uh, for toyota i don't think this would have been acceptable i don't think japanese chief engineer if they were to look at this would accept this so that i think is not quite right and same thing goes to the back of the um, uh, rear hatch here once again this gap is pretty wide and also this side and this side is not fully aligned so i think the body alignment i'm, I'm going to say is not as good as i can be i'm sure it will improve this is the first year for the new sequoia uh, so maybe it'll continue to get better over the next couple of years i certainly hope so in terms of paint job though, it has always been pretty good on the Sequoia and the Tundra ever since the new lineup came because they put a fair amount of clear coat, so really, really consistent paint. There is a fair amount of orange peel all the way through, which is typical of a Toyota product, so that's not abnormal. Um, but the paint job is better than the body fit and body alignment, so I would say that's actually a really good job. Really like the clear coat on all the panels. So at least the paint job is actually very good. Uh, what about some of the other issues I had with my Tundra TRD Pro? If you recall, there was a problem with one of the Ds flipped around. Well, I haven't seen that issue anywhere else. So, so far it's been good in terms of all the emblems and all of the fitment of the plastic parts are all good. Uh, also this part right here, I had a problem with the Tundra because this piece was sticking out, but the, I can tell that they've redesigned this piece and now this is not only properly fitting into this area, but also this section right here looks perfect. So they obviously redesigned this piece based on perhaps feedback from, uh, from me, perhaps. And also some of these trims that we had a problem with, some of these uh, molding, uh, all look good. So at least for Sequoia, no issues here, no problem with the paint job on the pillar here. Um, these are actually tapes that goes on top of the paint, so those are all pretty good. So the rest of the body is pretty good in terms of overall quality. Let's take a look inside. So now I'm inside the Sequoia TRD Pro and what about the quality of manufacturing? Well, as I grab this door to close it, not sure if you can hear it, but the same problem that I had in my Tundra TRD Pro seems to be on this door and that is the grab handle right here is slightly loose and when you grab it and hold on and close it, it makes a bit of a squeaky noise. Same thing on the driver's side and also the passenger side, so that I'm not too happy about. Uh, there was also a little bit of a rattle I'm, as I'm driving this car over rough road, somewhere along here, which is also a similar issue to what I had in my Tundra. So once again, it's something that I know that they can work on it and they'll continue to improve it, but as it stands right now, I'm not 100% happy with uh, the squeaks and rattle inside. And uh, everything else is same as the Tundra TRD Pro, so no complaint in terms of design and even the color combination of the black finish and the red is really good. But once again, the center console area, still pretty cheap looking and sounds cheap. So that's something that they won't be able to fix until the next refresh, probably in about four or five years time. But now let's get into the five things I like and the five things I'm not too crazy about so you will understand more about the Sequoia TRD Pro. So what's the first thing I like? Well, believe it or not, I actually love this powertrain. It's a 437 horsepower, 
3.4 liter twin turbo V6 engine with the hybrid mechanism. And you know what, this thing feels maybe not quite the same as a V8 engine because you can never replicate that feel, but it's actually really powerful right off the line and it feels immensely, immensely torquey. So uh, this is perhaps the best part of the Sequoia, which applies to the Tundra TRD Pro and Tundra Hybrid as well, because this engine I think is really well designed. Now I know that reliability wise, many of you guys might not be too crazy about having a turbocharged engine in a uh, truck based model, but so far it's proven to be pretty reliable ever since the very beginning of the Tundra production when they had a minor problem with the turbocharger but it's been reliable ever since that time. So I think the engine and also the 10-speed automatic transmission works really well. The second thing I really like about the Sequoia TRD Pro is obviously the practicality and the functionality because this thing is really big. So big that it's hard to park this thing in a city driving area. But uh, in terms of the spacing, front spacing, the middle room spacing, even the third room spacing is actually pretty good. Uh, not too crazy about the cargo space when the third seat is up, more on that later on. But otherwise, the overall practicality is very good. The third like is the design, which might surprise you. But as you know, I really like big trucks and anything that's based on the truck frame. And the Sequoia looks great because of the front design. As you know, in the Tundra, this grille is much bigger. And to be honest, I'm not too crazy about the design. I don't mind it, but it's not great looking. But for the Sequoia, by making this smaller and a little bit slimmer, Wow, what a change, what a transformation. The whole front end looks good. Everything looks very modern and even the side profile looks great. This thing looks expensive from outside and overall design in terms of the front and also the back. I think it's fantastic looking. They did a great job. It's way better looking than the Sequoia from the past. And it is definitely the best looking full size SUV in my opinion. Uh, so design is subjective, but I really like the design. The fourth thing I like is the interior design. And I talked about this with the Tundra TRD Pro that I own, but this is by far the best design from Toyota in terms of functionality and the fact that it's very easy to use. Especially, I love the 14 inch display. It's fast, it's responsive, very well designed. I had no issues with the infotainment system. The overall design of the interior, including the digital cluster in the case of uh, this Sequoia TRD Pro, is actually fantastic. Uh, even the glove compartment is reasonably big and a huge center console. The seats are comfortable and adjustment is easy to make in terms of the front seats anyways. Uh, all good. So the interior design Design, interior technology, fantastic. The fifth and the last positive thing that you should be aware of is the fact that this is a very well balanced vehicle to drive. Yes, it is still a little bit bumpy over rough road, but in terms of the handling and the balance of the ride and the feel, it's actually really good. Um, you get reasonably good road feedback. This Sequoia, as you are driving down and even going through some corners, it stays pretty stable. Yes, we don't have an independent rear suspension anymore, but in terms of handling side, I'm actually quite happy with it. And most passengers seem to be uh, pretty happy with the overall feel of the Sequoia on the road. What about the five things I'm not too crazy about? Well, the first one is obvious because I talked about it earlier, and that is the overall manufacturing quality. There's nothing inherently wrong with this vehicle in terms of the quality, but I think they need to work on this and improve it a little bit more. The gaps are too wide. The alignment is not quite there in terms of Toyota standard, and there's still a little bit of squeaks and rattle inside the vehicle, so something they have to work on over the next few years. The second thing I'm not too crazy about is not so much the ride quality in normal roads, but over bumpy roads. If you take this kind of like a semi-off-road course, or if you have to drive over a gravel road, this thing loses composure because we lost the independent rear suspension for the 2023 new model. We had one before that, but due to cost cutting and also engineering changes, they took that away because it's now sharing the same suspension system as a Tundra. And so it's not a problem in the city road and even the highway road is pretty stable, but over bumpy road, it loses composure. The third dislike is something that you guys already know about, and that is a compromise of the overall rear design. No problem with the third seating in terms of the comfort. It's actually quite comfortable and it's reasonably roomy. But uh, when you fold down the seat, you have this huge ridge over here because it sticks out. So it's not a flat cargo space. And even though we have this nice uh, hard uh, shelf here, when you remove it, you can tell how terrible this spacing is. So it's kind of useless if you need to load something that's long and big. And also when this seat is up, as you can see right here, this spacing right here is not very good. Now, many of the full-size SUV do suffer from similar issues, but if you compare to something like a Grand Highlander, 
This thing is quite terrible actually. The, the Grand Highlander has a huge space in the back and you can actually load it up with many luggages. But this one, if both seats are up, it's not very practical, it's not very usable. So this is definitely something that Toyota had to compromise because they had to use a Tundra platform and they could not um, put back the uh, independent rear suspension which takes up more space and obviously the hybrid battery is also taking up a space. So this is one of the things that I'm not too crazy about. The fourth dislike is to do with the sizing. Now this is a full size SUV, there's nothing you can do about the fact that this thing is big. But it's also really high because the Sequoia TRD Pro comes standard with this roof rack which is a beautiful design and very very practical but it raises the overall height to 77 inches so I actually cannot enter many of the underground parking right here in the west coast of Canada because we have lots of underground parking here with low ceiling. So this is a bit of a problem I found out this week uh, and of course most of us don't need this such a big SUV. I think Toyota Highlander or even the Grand Highlander should serve you really well in terms of practicality. I'm really not convinced that most of us really need something so big. I just found it awkward. So I'm really glad I didn't end up buying the Sequoia TRD Pro, but instead I bought a Lexus GX, which is the perfect sizing for me. A fifth and the last dislike on the Sequoia TRD Pro is the overall pricing of this thing. Here in Canada, this thing costs over $90,000 Canadian. I think it's about $80,000 in the US, give or take. Uh, and it's so expensive that I don't think most people can afford to buy this actually. Um, now I bought a Lexus GX fully loaded uh, for $78,000 Canadian. So it's $12,000 cheaper than the Sequoia. Certainly most of us cannot justify paying I think $90,000 for this thing when you can buy a really good SUV in the $70,000, $80,000 range, especially if you compare to something like a Grand Highlander, which doesn't have the pricing announced yet, but I'm sure that will be at least $10,000, $15,000 cheaper and most likely better value in terms of practicality. So I think the pricing is a bit of an issue for me. So as I begin to conclude on what I think of the Sequoia TRD Pro, I'm struggling to make that final recommendation. Do I like the Sequoia TRD Pro overall? Of course I do. It's a Toyota truck. It feels good on the road. It handles well. Lots of practicality and functionality built in. The latest software and latest safety technology as well. And this thing is a beast in terms of power and torque and therefore the accelerations. So lots of things to love about this uh, Sequoia TRD Pro but it is very expensive and not as practical as something like a Grand Highlander that's coming out very soon. And some quality issues still continue to nag me. So overall, if you want to buy a full-size truck and you love the Toyota brand, go and buy this thing. You won't be disappointed. You're going to still be very happy with it. But if you're asking me if there are better options that offer something similar in terms of value and also drivability, Yes, there are many other options in this competitive market. So I, I think it's something that you have to make a personal decisions on. For me, I, I think I'll be happier with um, something like a Grand Highlander, which is a unitized body, not body on the frame truck like this one, but it will handle better. It will have more uh, functionality in terms of the trunk space and most likely it will also drive smoother and more refined. So uh, for me, I don't think I actually need a full size truck based uh, SUV anymore. I just rather get something like a Grand Highlander, but you might still have a reason to have something like this because it's super heavy duty. And for those of you who appreciate truck based SUV, well, this is still going to be a good buy. So those are my thoughts for the 2023 Sequoia TRD Pro. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Sequoia TRD Pro. And uh, if you can give me a thumbs up or also subscribe, that'll be truly appreciated. But until next video, I'm signing off for now.